And Father, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, we are standing on 1 John 1, 9, Father, that you said we confess our sin, your faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Father, we love it that you said in the book of Isaiah, I am he that will block out our transgression and remember our sins no more. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. If you so choose not to remember the things we said and done, then Father, we will not be deceived by the enemy to allow thoughts to come in our mind to bring condemnation. For this morning, things have become new, God. For all things have passed away. Behold, look, see, things have become new in our lives. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we declare and we decree, God, in the name of Jesus, burdens will be lifted, God, that we may receive revelation knowledge, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God. That you may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. That the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know the hope of his calling. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance, God, that's on the inside of us Lord God according to the exceeding greatness of his power God not only us that believe God but but father but those of us God that's sitting on the inside at the right hand side of the father for above every principalities and power and might God and father we know we are seated in Christ God a seat of victory God we're not praying for victory we're praying from the place of victory in the name of Jesus sitting at the right hand side of the father and father as your sons and daughters God whom you God have ordained to come out from amongst them and be ye separated touch not the unclean things that you may receive us that you would be our father and we would be your sons and daughters father you said we are ambassadors for Christ God we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people for it is you that birthed us from the kingdom of darkness and birthed us into the kingdom of light and father I thank you that Jesus Christ himself made us kings and he made us priests our oh God so father we pray we speak we prophesy from our true identity in you father at the right hand side of the father in the name and in the blood of jesus christ of nazareth and father we're not ignorant to satan devices we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and power rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms and we break every satanic demonic assignment where satan trying to assign to bring demonic holes upon our mind our will, our emotion. Therefore, by the authority, Father, that you have given us that we can call those things that be done as though they were. Satan, loose your hope of the people of God. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, we break that habit, we break that addiction that we may be wrestling with. We break the shackles off that satanic and that demonic hold in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If Father, it's not your will that we be bound down by any satanic thing so therefore Satan you are trespassing on Jesus blood brought property therefore we command you to loose your hope now of the people of God in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ we shall walk in liberty in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth now father we pray that your gates be open God in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ that your word can penetrate that word that is that is powerful and sharp the any two double-edged sword that press the evil twin the violence thunder of our soul and spirit and joint in the marrow your word of design of our thoughts and intent of our heart father let that word come like a hammer and shatter everything that's not in your will in the name and in the blood of jesus christ we break the back on the spirit of religion in the name and in the blood of jesus christ of nazareth father we pray that you raise up your remnant in this hour from this house in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ raise up your remnant God that we may be put on the front line of what is being released upon this earth from the kingdom of darkness Father I call forth a shaking in again upon the remnant of new life church of faith that you shake us again oh God shake us from the mundane place shake us again God from the mundane living and set us ablaze set us on fire God for your glory for your kingdom, in the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 wonderful Jesus wonderful Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord it's for your glory God it's for your presence God you're looking to and full for your remnant you're looking to and full for your remnant you're looking to and full for your remnant God father you found a trust in our hearts oh God in the name and in the blood of Jesus for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapon our warfare is not colonel, but it's mighty through God. Uh, breaking down every demonic stronghold upon our mind. Uh, casting down every imagination, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, and we break every demonic hole. Uh, where we have ignorantly opened up a door to the enemy. Uh, and we break every shackle. Uh, we break every satanic cycle, God. Uh, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Irabasi. Hallelujah. 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 Every pain, every pain, every pain that you may be experiencing in your body, every pain, every pain in the name and in the blood of Jesus, every pain in your body, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of infirmity, loose your hook of the people of God. I'm hearing God say rebellion. Bind the spirit of rebellion of the children's lives. We bind the spirit of rebellion in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. You found spirit of rebellion loose your whole in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. For do you not know the power is in your belly, said God. For my Holy Spirit the world in you, said God. And you have more power inside of you than any Man made power, said God. If you begin to open your mouth, said God, and break shackles, and break shackles, I will release it upon you, said the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel an anointing. Feel like I can just take off and run. I feel an anointing for God. I feel the presence and the power of God. I feel like I'm about to explode every shire in the name of Jesus. The Satan cannot dwell in the house where God's people dwell. Just cannot be. Hallelujah. 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 I declare and I decree. And he said, whatsoever I decree, it shall be established upon you. I decree an intensified hunger, an intensified thirst and that for God, where you will become a student of the word of God. I break out for you worldliness in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall, I speak and I prophesy, that you shall become a student of the word of God. Which is the foundation of life Herobosaya. in the name of Jesus I hate the devil and everything he stands for hallelujah when we come to the full revelation knowledge of who we are in God Satan cannot stand a match we are a royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, a people that belong to God. There's more power in your belly when you begin to speak than any force in this world when we know who we are in God. We are sons and daughters of God. We are ambassadors for God. We are king and we are priests. This is how God sees us from the lenses of God. Don't you dare identify yourself from what you going through in this world hallelujah for this world gonna soon pass away but only what we do for god gonna last hallelujah hallelujah Whew. he's here the presence of the lord is here should i'm trying to calm myself down that we may speak the word of god but God said, the waters is troubled. Halalabasi. The water is troubled. And we can no longer put things before God. Because things going to pass away. 
But only what we do for God, it going to last. And in the name of Jesus, and I speak into this atmosphere. Anything that Satan trying to release in the atmosphere to bring heaviness, I take authority over it right now, and I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, the presence of the Lord is in this atmosphere. And whatever you need God to do in your life, begin to speak it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. If you can. What matters most is the presence of God. Hallelujah. What matters most is the presence of God. Sons and daughters of God, he love us deeply. He love us with such an agape, unconditional love. Hallelujah. And I'm asking God to allow your anointing to rest upon me for this hour, God. That I may speak what you are saying and what you are doing in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And giving honor to our pastor, first lady, in their absence, hallelujah. We thank God for their life and the calling upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Giving honor to my family, my wife. I see my sons here. My daughter, praise my mother-in-law, my wife, Kelly, and my entire family. I want to start calling names. So I'll get someone I really feel bad. So until my entire family, God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. When I say God loves us deeply, I mean just that. He loves us with such an unconditional love. I was studying 1 John 2.27. I was studying this. And it says, the anointing that abides in you. You need no man to teach you. It's called the abiding anointing. The anointing is the presence and the power of God. Season of grieving and mourning. Jesus. Lord, what are you, what are you saying? Scripture reference, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 4. To everything there is a season. A time. God's time is Kairos time. We live in what we call Kronos time. But we pray that God Kairos time invade our Kronos time. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Verse 4. There's a time to grieve, yes, and then there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn, and there's a time to dance. God began to say to me, son, I... Now, before I proceed... You did not hear me say grieving and mourning over the loss of a loved one. And I know what we say, I'm sorry to hear about your loss. Okay, that's fine language for the world. Because the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, the natural man may receive not the things of the Lord. It is foolish unto them. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And this is why we don't debate with unbelievers because they cannot. They think the things of God is foolish. And I know we really try to be politically correct. Sorry to hear about your loss. But do understand that that's an insult to Jesus. And that's not the look for my beloved uh, Uncle Ebra Mathis for his home going serving his passing. While at the same time still grieving with, with, te with teacher Linda Lucas in the passing of Robert Lucas. And yet still walking with Mother Shaw in the passing of Daddy Shaw. And then just a couple weeks later walking with Deacon Gibson in the passing of his wife Barbara Gibson. And now, this past Friday, our very own one of the generals in Danville, Illinois, uh, Deacon Irvin Lucas, the father of Tasha Fleming and the father-in-law of Minister Fleming and the grandfather of Nikita Lipskin. And God, I, I begin to think about all of this. And I see why God said we are in a season.
season of mourning and we're in a season of craving. Now watch this. The pain that we experience and the passing and the promotion of our love for our listeners it goes so deep in the crevices of our soul our soul being our mind our will and our emotion and when that's a loved one that pass or be promoted understand that pain goes deep down in the crevices of our soul he says son teach my people those that belong to me teach them how to grieve and teach them how to mourn in the operation of the resurrection of my only begotten son Jesus. That pain goes deep in the crevice of our soul and our spirit. And when we experience that walk and the passing of the promotion of the loved one, our heavenly father, the one that made, created, and informed us, he come quickly in Matthew 11 and 28, where he said, come, 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 come unto me, all who are weary and of heavy burden, and I will give you rest. He said this real quickly, because he know that pain goes deep in the crevices of our soul. So he said, come, 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 come quickly. Come, so that I may give you rest. Why, God? Listen to this. Because he knows. Because that door is so wide open in the area of our soul and that pain is so real. He has to come. Listen to this. When we allow him to. He will not violate our will. But when we allow him to. It is then he walked with us. Listen to this. Psalm 23. He walked with us through the dark valley shadow of death. Where we would fear no evil. For his rod and his staff comfort us. Can I tell you some church, there are different dimensions where we experience the presence of God. We experience him this morning when we worship. We experience in God when we study the word of God. When we study to show ourselves approved. And we work with need not to be ashamed of the word of God. But we know how to rightly divide the word of truth, yes? And we experience God in praise, yes? But can I tell you some? There is a dimension in the presence of God that he reserved for us in the passing of our loved ones where he walked with us through the dark valley shadow of death. And as he'll walk with us in the dark valley shadow of death, listen to this, we have to give up our right to understand. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. When we experience the passing of the promotion of our loved ones as we are grieving and mourning. And let me tell you, it is right to grieve and mourn. Jesus Christ grieved. So it is right. It is healthy for our soul. When we are grieving and mourning in the passing of the promotion of our loved ones, he tells us, Matthew 11, 28, Come, come unto me, all who are in heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Why, God? That I may walk with you in the dark valley, shadow of death, where you will fear no evil, where I will comfort you with my rod and my staff. There is a dimension, man, he loves us so much. There is a dimension he reserved for us just in the passing of our loved ones where he walked with us. Listen to this. As he walked with us, my God, we have to give up our right to understand where we experience his peace that surpasses all understanding that would guide our mind and our heart into righteousness. Why is this so important? Why do he come quickly and say, come, 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 come? Why do he say quickly? Because there is a devil. Jesus. First Peter to say he's like a roaring lion and he's seeking the one he made the vow. And he's a low down scandal. In our grief and in our mourning and the past of our loved ones. Satan also come quickly to give us demonic counseling. He can't read our mind. But he interjects thoughts in our mind, especially 
and the tenderness of pain while I'm grieving and mourning in the passing of a loved one. And Satan come quickly to give us demonic counseling of lies. Did you not pray for your loved one and they still died? How can your God do this? With the purpose of drawing us away from God in anger and rage. Now, it's a fight. I'm going to show you something about his disciples. I'm talking about the same disciples that walked with Jesus. Those same disciples that saw him do miracle signs and wonders. Those same disciples that was there when he raised Lazarus from the grave. But they began to mourn. They began to grieve when Jesus died on the cross. 21 times Jesus told them, I will be resurrected. 21 times he told his disciples this. And look what happened. Look at the book of Mark, chapter 16, starting with the ninth verse. Mark chapter 16, starting with the ninth verse, going down to the 11th. Mark 16, starting with the ninth verse. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast out seven demons. Look at verse 10. And she went and told them, talking about the disciples, that he had been with him as they what? As they mourned and wept. Look at that. And they, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, what happened? They believed not. Because of their mourning and their grieving, Jesus told them 21 times I'm going to be risen. But because of their mourning and grieving, they did not allow God to walk them through the dark valley shadow of death where they would fear no evil where God would comfort them with his rod and his staff. They allowed the enemy to come in and draw them to unbelief. Now, I'm not by all means judging the disciples because I know that walk. I was five years old my brother Lay was six. Minister Chris Oden was not yet born. And my mama who gave her life to the Lord when she was nine years old, my mama, Marvelyn Oden in Grenada, Mississippi, made sure she raised her children up in Christ. I was five years old when she taught me how to pray. And Lay was six, when she would make us kneel down beside our bunk beds. And we could not go to bed unless we say our nighttime prayer. I was five years old and I'm 55 now. Now, you know when Proverbs 22 and 6 said train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart. My God, that, that scripture is true to heart. I was five years old and now I'm 55 and I still remember mama prayed that she had me lay praying before we go to sleep. And the prayer goes something like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul he would keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul he would take. That was the prayer we have to say every night before we go to bed. Every night. Mama taught us to pray. And she always said, God will answer your prayer. And God is good. Mama raised us up in church. Chris, Mr. Chris was a little baby. My baby sister Tanya was not yet born. And, and mama made sure that her boys were raised in church. Not only were we raised in church, we had to get involved in church. She made us join the choir. She made us join the usher board. And we could not sing with the kids' choir. We could not uh, get on the usher board with no little kids. We had to get singing in, the, in, in, the, in the adult choir. And I believe it's because she wanted to make sure we weren't playing around in church. And she made sure that we were on the usher board. Mama made sure of this. Went to church every Sunday. And there were times that me and Lay stayed outside to get dirty to make sure. Well, if we get dirty, we'll have to take a bath and we would be late. And Mama wouldn't go to church. Well, we went to church dirty many a times. Mama didn't play by God. She didn't play. The summer of 1985, I was 16 years old. 
And Lay was 17. My baby brother, Minister Chris, was seven. Mama came and said we had a family meeting. And I was in the kitchen playing. I was late to the meeting and I sat down. You see, Mama and I, we was very, very good friends. She was my best friend. She was my God in light. She would often tell me I played too much. I heard that again from Kelly Praise. So I guess it must be true. So we, we sat down. I can tell my daddy kept his head down. I can tell mama had been crying. And she said, baby, she was holding Chris in her lap. She said, baby, mama got some news. She said, mama is sick. Okay. She said, baby, mama had developed breast cancer. And me, I said, Mama, that's no problem. We going to pray. And you said, Mama, whatever we pray about, that God hear our prayer. So, Mama, you're going to be fine. We're going to pray. And I still remember Mama looking at me with tears in her eyes and gave that faint smile. She said, yeah, baby, Mama going to be okay. 16 years old. February the 6th was my birthday. I turned... 17. Mama died a few days after my birthday. And I, of course, did not know the word of God. I was a child. I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But that old devil quickly came to give me demonic counsel. Now, mind you, while mama was going through this sickness, I used to get up every night and go to the bathroom with the light off and pray, God, don't let mama die. God, don't let mama die. God, don't let mama die. Just the thought of mama dying scared me to no ends. Mama died. And I still remember the voice of the devil. Did you not pray for your mama? And she died. Then our mama said, whatever you pray to God for, that he going to give it. And that's a 17 year boy with a birthday. Never experienced drugs. Never experienced sexual immorality. And Satan draw me back from God. And I walked in resentment and anger at God. Because of the lies of the money counseling that that saint told me at 17 years old that God did not love me. God did not hear your prayer. God took your mama and she's lost. And every time I used to hear people say, I'm sorry about your loss, it scared me because I thought mama was lost. Jesus, now, and I experienced this, and Satan drew me from God. All I knew all of my life was God. And now, he got me walking in sexual morality, drugs, alcohol, where I became addicted to crack cocaine. All because of the mourning and grieving of my mama. Let me tell you some saints. Don't judge the alcoholic. Don't judge the drugs addict. There are many addicts. There are many alcoholics that are struggling because they didn't know how to deal with the grief and the mourning. And Satan walked them into drugs and alcohol to dull the pain. Let me tell you something. There are many suicides that people have committed because they didn't know how to deal with the mourning. And they didn't know how to deal with the grieving. So Satan gave them the money counseling to take their life. Telling them you can be where that person at. That's the diabolical demonic scheme of the devil. He's a low down, dirty sandra. He's the father of lies. Jesus. 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 But that same God and that same bathroom, three years being addicted to crack because they didn't know how to deal with the grief. In the morning of my mama, in that same bathroom, and that same God, God, on a Thursday night, praying and crying, God, if you don't deliver me from crack cocaine, God, there's no way I'm going to make it. Friends, oh, dear. And let me tell you something. I did not see God. 
God in that bathroom, but I felt God. I experienced God from a relationship first before I experienced him in the church. I experienced God in Grenada, Mississippi, in a dark place in the bathroom. The Spirit of the Lord came and picked me up and set me free from crack cocaine. It was my work. It was my mouth, but I'm looking at my dad in medicine cabinet, and I said to myself, God speaking through me, you are free from crack cocaine, and you'll never touch crack cocaine another day in your life. And I've been running for revenge against the devil ever since. I've been coming at him ever since. You took years off my life because of your lie. You had me sleeping in abandoned cars. You had me spending thousands of thousands of dollars. And I'm coming after you with everything I got. With every authority, with every anointing, with the word of God, with the prayers, with fasting and praying. I'm coming after the kingdom of darkness. He owned me. And this is why I got to buffet this body and make this body my slave. No longer you going to use me for drugs and alcohol and sexual immorality. No, you won't by the grace of God. I'm coming. And that's why I got to be a student of the word of God that I may know how to fight. Whew. Why sit there and die when all the power that's in us We only here for a moment. Make it count. Make it count. Make it count. Colossians chapter 2. The book of Colossians chapter 2. He says, Son, new life is in a season of grieving and mourning. Teach my people how to grieve and mourn and the provision. Of the operation of the resurrection of Jesus. Where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He didn't believe it in me even though he died, yet he should live. <laughs> Whoever lives and believes in me will what? Would we'll never die. So the question is asked, in the operation of God, what did Jesus do from the time they took him off the cross? Until the time they laid him in Joseph Barrett's tomb. We celebrate resurrection. Even the world celebrates resurrection with Easter eggs hunt. The church celebrates resurrection as an event. We have morning service and, 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 and we do all of this as an event. But the resurrection of Christ is not an event. I am the resurrection. And the world and the church celebrated one time a year. That's the spirit of religion. It's time for the revelation knowledge of the sons and the daughters of God. The word of God keep us. But revelation knowledge will loose you and break you out. So I pray that God will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That we may know the hope of his call. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance? Colossians chapter 2, look at verse 8. Jesus. Jesus. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, out of the tradition of men, out of the, 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 the rudiments of this world, and not out of Christ. Look at verse 9. For in him do well all the what? Fullness of the Godhead. Verse 10. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all purpose, and and power. Now, when he said complete in him, do know and do understand. When he said that we have to now get the revelation knowledge and see ourselves the way our heavenly father sees us, who made, created, and formed us. We are complete in Christ. We are new creatures in Christ. All things have passed away. Look, see, behold. Things have become new. It's not no cute. Oh, I'm just saved. No, it's deeper than that. 
We are actually in a realization. We are new creatures in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, things have become new. Look at verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. See, that's more than just water baptism. That's a baptism of resurrection. It's a baptism in his death. That word baptism means to immerse. That means if I, if, if I mail a love letter to my wife, that letter, and I say I go home to Mississippi, and I write her a love letter, and she's still in Danville, then that love letter is enveloped in the envelope and it's mail. Wherever that love letter, the envelope go, that love letter go. So we are baptized. We are enveloped in Christ. When he died, we died. When he rose, we rose. See, that's the revelation knowledge we got to get. And that comes from studying to show us up approved. A work we need not to be the same by the word of God, but not to write and divide the word of truth. My God, look at this. Bear with him in baptism wherein also you risen with him through the faith, here it is, of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. What is the operation of God? And that's what he spoke to me as I was studying 1 John 2, 27, thinking he wanted me to speak on the anointing. But he loved us so much that he know where we at. He says, son, my perfect will is to teach my people how to grieve and mourn in me. And that's what we're doing. Right now, let me a few minutes, we're going to study what is the operation of God. But first, let me make sure that you get the right definition of what it means when somebody die or dead or dying. The world and Satan and even the church have convinced us that when a person died, they don't exist no more. That's a farther thing from the truth. Even the church said, well, they're just sleeping in their grave. No, that word of sleep in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 is used as a metaphor. When a person die, when we die, that word death only means separation from God. That's only what it means. I think remember in the book of Genesis chapter 2, where God planted a garden eastward in Eden, a garden of Eden, which is the garden of God's presence. There's not a place where the garden of Eden was planted. Eden means the presence of God. The garden of Eden can be right here, if God is here. So he planted a garden eastward, the garden of Eden, and he told Adam, now I want you to protect this garden. I want you to dress it. In other words, make sure nothing or nobody enters this garden. That was out of first disobedience, and Satan came in used the body of a snake. Deceived Eve, but Adam disobeyed. But remember what God told him? He said, now, Adam, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, if you eat from it, what's going to happen? You're going to die. That word die in Genesis 2 is the first time that dying or death ever been mentioned on the, first of the, the face of this earth, the very first time on this earth. It was mentioned from God. But that word dead itself was dead. Adam and Eve disobedient birthed sin. Sin gave life to death. And we've been dying ever since. But we have a God love us so deeply. There's no way in his mindset that he can have us, his people, his son and daughter forever separated from him. So God said, so I got to get into an operation. I got to make sure I can't fathom the thought of my people who are created for my glory ever being separated from me. Now, mind you now, when Adam disobeyed God and brought life to death, he didn't die a physical death. And I know you know this because he lived 930 years longer, but he died a spiritual death right then and there. And this is why when we come through our mother's womb, we are born into this world, a world ruled by Satan. We are born spiritually dead because of the sin of Adam and Eve. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. So we, everybody following me so far? Okay. So here we are. Must be born again to get back in relationship with God. What do the word dead or death mean? Only means separated from God. You're not sleeping in no grave. You're, you, 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 it's, it's not where you don't exist no more. You're not in no purgatory. It only means what? Separation from God. Separation from God. That's what it means. And there are three stages. 
we born dead, spiritually dead, separated from God. I mean, that's one we very familiar with when our soul and our spirit leave our body, that physical death. And the third kind of death we don't ever want to experience it. And that's eternal separation from God. And God did everything he can to fix this disobedience of Adam and Eve. So turn with me to Matthew 12 and 40. We get ready quickly to get into the operation of God. Because he could not bear the thought of his sons and daughter being separated from him when we die. Death is not nothing to be feared. As the world, Satan using the devil to make sure there's fear when we die. Ain't no fear. Maybe fear of the unknown, but ain't no fear. But God has fixed this thing. But I grieve in our morning because we're going to miss the sign. Just like Jonah was in the belly of the world three days and three nights. He said the man, the son of man going to be in the heart of this earth three days and three nights. Now let's get into the operation. Jesus prophesied this. Now turn to me, Ephesians chapter 4. We good so far? Amen. Are we understanding so far? Amen. Anybody who don't understand, raise your hand. You don't understand? Anybody who don't understand, raise your hand. We'll be at a four o'clock until you understand. Besides CL. <laughs> now he's, he prophesied to the religious leader the saying, I'm going to be in the heart of this earth three days and three nights. Now let's find out what happened to Jesus as he hung on that cross from nine o'clock in the morning to three o'clock uh, during that evening, Jesus was on that cross for six hours. Now let me break it down for you. Why six hours? Let me tell you, God is a God of order. He don't do nothing by happenstance. When God does something, it is always in the mysteries of the revelation knowledge. Jesus Christ, from nine in the morning to three that evening, hung on the cross for as he was laying in that grave. Remember the prophecy. He prophesied that he's going to be in the hearts of the earth three days to three nights. Look at Ephesians 4. We're about done. Hold on. Hold on. We're about done. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gift unto men. Now that he ascend, what is it? But he also descend. Now I want to highlight, he descend what? First. That's very key. That's very key. He descend what? First. So when they took him, now look, this is why he's in the grave. This is when they took Jesus down from the cross. This is before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Remember what we just read in Colossians chapter 2? This is the operation of God because he confined him the thought of his people dying. So he came with an operation. Okay? He came with an operation. He descended first where? In the lower parts of the earth. We good so far? We got to be students of the word of God. We had enough of this world, so not. We got to be students of the word of God. Because the stuff I hear ain't going to last. Job, 401k, retirement, cars, houses, land. That stuff going to pass away. We got to become students of the word of God. <laughs> okay. He descended. He, he descended in the same also. He ascended. Of far above all heaven that he might fulfill all things. Okay? He descended, it's the same, but he also ascended. Of far above all heavens that he may what? Fulfill all things. Let me, let me break it down. Is that 10? Now, Jesus sent that laying on the tomb. They wrapped him up, they anointed him. Jesus, this is this very important. You want to know what happens when we die and when what Jesus did to make sure our Heavenly Father is no longer separated from us. Jesus Christ, body on that Friday 
and that sanity still laying in the tomb. Listen to this. His embodied soul and spirit went down to hell. You, 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 you follow me? Now, in the Old Testament that was written in Hebrew, it's called Sheol. In the New Hades, where all the unbelievers went. Jesus Christ went down to Abraham's bosom, also called paradise. Now, mind you, remember the thief on the cross? One will make it with mocking Jesus. The other one said, how can you do this? He said, Jesus, remember me when you get to paradise. Paradise was not yet heaven. Paradise was Abraham's bosom. So Jesus Christ went down to Abraham's bosom. Why they call it Abraham's bosom? Because when the Old Testament believers went down there, Abraham would greet them with a hug at the door. Are we good? Oh, you don't believe me. Let me show it to you real quick. You looking at me like you don't believe me. Let me show it to you. Look at Luke 16. Luke 16 and 19. Luke 16 and 19. Real quick, because we got to do the Lord's Supper. Luke 16. Luke 16, verse 19. Look at this. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he lived luxuriously every day. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores. 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sword. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried where? To Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died also and was buried. And in hell, in Hades, in Sheol, he looked up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. 24. And he cried with a voice, saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Accept that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Have nothing to do with how you feel. The moment we die, what death means? Separation. We are separated from this body. Okay? This body goes back to the dirt from which it came. You can open up any casket. What you begin to see a deterioration of this flesh. The flesh is our bodies with its five senses. But the moment we die, in the same moment, the soul and the spirit separate from this body. And according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, we are absent from this old dirt corrupt body. And we are in the presence of the Lord. When my brother lay died, immediately he was embracing Jesus. Heavenly Father, he was embracing my mama. He was embracing his grandmama. Let me tell you something. The pain is real. And it dwells down in the deep crevice of our soul. That's why we got to walk with God as he walked with us in the dark valley of shadow death. But let me tell you something. Don't you dare let a devil in hell have us to live our worst life while they live in their best life. The pain is real. And that's why we got to come quickly and allow God to walk us through where we, where we give up. Where we give up our own understanding. Let me tell you something what got me in trouble. A nasty world. A place where we have a body without sickness, without disease. Yes, we're going to miss our loved one, but my God, I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory of the Lord that shall be revealed. You trying to tell me the God that loves us, they not ready to fix this thing? Don't you dare let Satan lie to you. But our job, Let's continue fighting that good fight of faith. Because every day is a fight. And Satan doing every day to make sure we experience the ultimate death, be eternal, separated from him, and what we call damnation, the lake of fight. Now understand, Hades, Sheol, hell is still there. Remember in Isaiah where it said, hell have enlarged itself, meaning there's no more Abraham bosom. So hell has scratched. But I declare and I decree not one of you will end up in hell. 
I declare and I decree that you're going to fight the good fight of faith. I need you to stand right now, please. Come on with that, 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 uh, the altar to come music. I, I want the ministers to come to the altar. Uh, uh, minister, if you need mass, it's a God mass right here. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to pray. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. And I don't know, I don't know, and after that, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. But we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know.